and obviously at some point tomorrow we'll be doing <laughs> Ben's, you know, bye bye Ben. How about you and I do a little gag? <laughs> Oh, that was and it. Then it, <laughs> it just stops after the little gag. <laughs> In today's episode of Help I Sex and My Boss, one G and Diva has had a problem with her husband and his hemorrhoids. We tell you all about our Christmas plans. And we say goodbye, thank God, to EPB. If you've enjoyed this episode, hit like and subscribe and watch new episodes on this channel every Wednesday and Friday. Hello and welcome to Help I Sex and My Boss. Sorry. Do it again whilst Ben stopped making it. I won't miss this. I was trying to sound solemn and downbeat then, and you've annoyed me now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Hell by Sexted My Boss. The podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. No one's died. <laughs> Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those... Oh, it's God. To those everyday dilemmas. Like, what's been our best dilemma of 2023? And how do you send off someone who's gallivanting to South America for three months? By his own choice. What should you do if you've accidentally sexed your boss? I don't know how I'm going to get through today's episode. I don't know how I'm going to get through it either. <laughs> But we're not usual like any answer. We will have had some the UK's leading etiquette experts. No, we're not, Jordan North. I'm more Frosty the Snowman. You're more Frosty Jacks. Oh, I've not had that for donkey's years. And that's from Nancy. Oh, that sends me... That's not one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I used to drink that on park. Can I ask, what is Frosty Jacks? Cheap. Do they still do it? This uh, bottle of cider it used to be like neon blue bottle of cider. I can't have cider. Mm-hmm. Bacardi or mulled wine. No. Because I drank them when I was younger, and it? Well, I don't think you're missing much. Oh, oh. What you can have, however, <laughs> is gin and de bonnet. You've had a good week. Your final gin and de bonnet, maybe. Certainly on mic. So, um, if, if you're not aware, this is producer Ben's last episode. For a short time. For a quarter of a year. Yes, he is gone for a quarter, isn't he? He's going away for three months. He's going travelling in his gap yard. <laughs> It is very Gap Yard vibes, isn't it? So all those adverts you hear mm. is because producer Ben makes us read them so he can piss off yes. to South America for three months. Yeah. Laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> What's South American for bank? <laughs> bank. Bank. Banco. Bank or something. Uh, <laughs> who shall we talk to? Well, look, not only... I mean, God, honestly... Not only is this his last Tuesday episode with us, but also on the day this episode goes out, it will be Tuesday the 19th of December, which is producer Ben's birthday. Oh, I've got your card and a book in the bag for you. His 30th birthday. So I think we should toast executive producer Ben. To executive producer Ben. Executive producer Ben. Cheers. No clinking, obviously, because clinking is... Common. Thank you. As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at Sex with My Boss. Or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram. That's at Sex with My Boss. Or you can write to William, who, in the fullness of time, promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards of executive self-seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sexofmyboss.com. We should also toast, not that we usually bother... Because if it was a bad review, we probably wouldn't even mention it. But we should also <laughs> toast to... Miranda Sawyer. Miranda Sawyer, who gave us a very lovely review in The Guardian. So she even mentioned producer Ben. So. Yes. So <laughs> cheers, Miranda. But we're not bothered what critics think. <laughs> <laughs> but cheers. Yes, thank I mean, you. we're nice, that. Because mm. we yeah. It had... Can I say, it had Guardian edges when it came to describing oh, a we go. posh person. How? I, do, I can't write. I have to have. I don't I, get that because half of them probably went to school with you. Yeah, quite exactly. <laughs> I know. It's, it's. I mean, glass houses, etc. But uh, I can't remember because I don't have it in front of me. But there's just the odd phrase. No, it's like, did you need to put that? No, I thought it was a very, very nice review. It, no, 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 no. Ninety-nine percent of it, yes, completely agree. Really nice. Yeah. yeah, and also nice for us to be reviewed because we have done this for so long and nobody ever reviews us. So thank you. I think I was. What was I described as a? Um, puppy. Your puppy. A Burnley Northern puppy. A Burnley Northern puppy. I, uh, I carry your bags and laugh at your jokes. Yeah. Yeah. I've just got your job nailed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be quite a tough show to get through today, but... Um, I'm sure we'll manage to. We went to producer Ben's birthday party. His yes. 30th, 
which was, I mean, so much to talk about. Mm. Don't know if this is lovely or tragic, but his birthday cake that his mum and dad got for him actually had on it producer Ben. <laughs> That's sweet. Had they run that by us? And <laughs> I'm the first to take the mick out of you, but your family are lovely. It was so nice to be there. I mean, I, I, and I, I did turn up, everybody. It was... It, but it on. was nice to... And I, I was there, you know, at the start of the evening. And I'm genuine, I'm saying this, and I, there's no... Please don't look for a joke, but there were so many people there. And I thought I that was nice. People yeah. that I, I, you know, didn't necessarily know who they were. We wouldn't have that many people. <laughs> <I>. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, they were rent a crowd, but it was, it was nice to have them there. Just imagine whilst you're listening right now, of what a 30th birthday party in Hackney would be like, because it was exactly what you'd imagine. Yes, it took me a while to get there. I had a lovely walk. It, Could I also apologise? I was on the phone to Mikey uh, about something, actually quite serious, but we won't go into it. And um, someone waved and went, William, and, shout, and started shouting Wendy. And I was a bit like, oh, I can't, I'm on the phone. And also it's going to be late. So I'd just like to apologise to that person. Of course I'll be there. I'll be at the future. It meant a great deal to me. Can I buy a potato peel? It could have worked. <laughs> Good, yeah. Um, um, but yes, had a nice walk through it was East in London. A, it was in a... Um, basically, they served food on silver trays. And it was yes, in well, a, You're making it sound like Claridge's. It was in a brewery. Yes. Yeah. It was in a, a factory, wasn't it? I described it to you on text, I think, as a scrapyard when I was outside. I believe you said but... it's a <laughs> fucking scrapyard. <laughs> I was outside at this point. I didn't realise, actually, it had already started um, and you had a sort of a private space. So I was wandering around outside going, it's going to be freezing. Anyway, it was inside. I met Cat's uh, parents as well. Yes, they're Which, lovely. They are really nice. I had I had Cat's mum in the palm of my hand by the end of the night. Wow. Yeah. That was very close. She, um, yeah, she very much... Her and Kat are very similar. Good laugh, yeah. Yes. No, they are. They're lovely. You can see That's where... That's the thing about you Northerners. <laughs> you might have no money and live in an absolute shithole, but your sense of humour is second to none. Don't lose that, young did, man. Did Sean well, actually no, say that? Say no, that. <laughs> <laughs> so what time are you down the mine tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. She wasn't like that. She was very nice. Very, yeah. very nice. And producer Ben had uh, producer Ben Bunting. Yes, he did. That's producer Ben at Glastonbury. Yes, with his <laughs> eyes closed. And there, and there were stickers on the table as well, which was a different image. Yes. yes. Also, can I apologise as well? Um, during the birthday cake being brought out on the candles, people mm. shouted, speech, speech. And there was an awkward silence. So I went, hi, guys. No, <laughs> no one <not>. laughed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No one laughed. And it was very awkward. Do, do, how many of them listened to the podcast that were there? None. There's a few. There's a it's, sorry, Ben just counted one on his finger. So I, was, met, yeah, you. I met your mate from Belfast with your neckerchief. He were a good laugh. Rory. Rory. And it proves my point that I, I'll always say the Northern Irish have the best sense of humour. Yes. I was like, I like your neckerchief. He was like, I'm not going to do the accent. Go on. I was like, here now, yeah, he wouldn't wear this in Belfast. He'd get fucking kneecaps over. <laughs> so we were chatting away. His little neckerchief on. We should, we should also say, hey, I, I'd like to apologise to everyone for last week's episode, uh, which became like an incredibly middle-class version of Jeremy Kyle with our argument. We were a moment away from doing a lie detector test um, with Ben and me, and fueled by you, I have to say. Hey! With I'm me not... shouting, the invitation says four! And Ben <laughs> wanting everyone to turn up from seven. And then you were basically there at half three. Yeah, because I... I could have turned up earlier. I uh, I backdoor boogie as well, by the way. I'm sorry. Sorry. Wait, what? I backdoor boogie. Thought you were sitting funny. Well, did a French exit, whatever you call yeah, it. I know you did. Yeah. Sorry. Well, you were pissed by that. And... Oh, that. And I'm in my third. You can tell you in your thirties because all. Only, well, you're not. He's not even in his thirties. All the way right? in the taxi is going. What we're going to fucking Acne for on a Saturday? Thanks, guys. I'm joking. It was a very very good night, actually. I, enjoy, I was very sad to leave. I, I had a very wholesome day that day when I got my Christmas tree. Yes, we, um, we should, that was also the day in the morning. You and I were in Battersea signing books at Sainsbury's. Oh, yes. 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 I forgot about that. And then after we finished... Thanks to everyone that came to see us in Sainsbury's in Battersby. Battersea. <laughs> Where did I say? Battersby. Oh, yeah, we were in Dog Zone. Um, yes, and uh, afterwards you went and did your Christ you did got your Christmas decorations from the yeah. Christmas decoration aisle. I helped you pick out your baubles. I told you I didn't need two packs of lights, but you won't be told. 
I bought two. So now I've got a spare box of fair, fairy lights and I've lost the receipts. So well, you can just put them back. wherever. Put them around a door frame or something. No. Why not? It's tacky. <laughs> What do you mean it's tacky? It's all right around a Christmas tree. Or up the banisters. Or you don't have a banister, but, you know, up the thing. You know, whatever you held on to. It's glass, isn't it? I know, yeah. Well, you could probably take them to the top. Okay. As it were. So like I'm going to be allowed... for more fairy light chat. Yes, there will be more fairy light chat coming up. Okay. Um, but your tree looks very nice. Thanks, I had a really wholesome day. I say wholesome, it's actually quite stressful lugging a tree from a tree yard to your house. A tree yard? <laughs> where what? the heck did you go? <laughs> It was a little I mean, married. They were selling it in a church, actually. Oh, yeah, they often, yeah, they commandeer sort of areas. Yeah. Did you get anything for the top? Uh, a star. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got it. And thingy. Mm. Um, how, was, uh, how was DP then, Double Panto? Great. Yeah? Yeah, very good. It's the only really weekend we had free in order to do the Pantos this side of Christmas, anyway. Uh, very good. Palladium Panto, excellent. Um, Sleeping Beauty Takes a Prick, also very good. Who was in that one? The Sleeping Beauty one, uh, actors. Oh, okay. No names, as it were. I mean, sure, their names, their names in their own household. <laughs> but I, they wouldn't, you know, Jennifer Saunders was in the Palladium one, so I wouldn't oh, sort was of, she? yeah. What was the best line that you remember? Oh, in Sleeping Beauty, <clears throat> Mikey uh, liked the one where, because uh, there's, you know, there was, it's gay panto, so there's, there's a type in the audience. And um, uh, there was a joke, something <laughs> like... There was a joke, something like, oh, you know, all you, all you audience members with your big muscles that you need for your jobs as account managers. And that was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. All the gays have, you know, or not, all, not all the gays, but a lot of gays have all these big muscles and, you know, they sit in an office all day. <laughs> we just found it very funny. I'm glad I give that a miss. Well, you weren't invited. Oh, no, I wasn't. No. Thanks for my I invited invite. you to the other one. I was, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but no, it was it was good. It was a nice it was a nice weekend. Um, ben came to the Palladium Panto with me. Did you? Ben? Yeah, sat next to me and offered him offered me his Twiglet halfway through Act One, which was good. When was this? On, across. on Sunday. On Sunday night. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sunday five o'clock. Oh. He's thirty now, so we have to do things earlier. <laughs> Needs to be in bed. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, <laughs> welcome to two day hangovers. Yeah. 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 Wait, wait till those two day hangovers start kicking in. Hmm. Mm. Uh, but no, we we did have a nice time. Before um, DP Weekend, uh, I was in Brussels. And it's my new favourite thing. It happened to me twice whilst I was away. Uh, once at the Eurostar and once actually in Brussels. People came over to me, you know, like people that you meet at um, the Eurostar terminal or in shops. And it automatically, before I had said anything, spoke to me in French. And I think that adds an air of sophistication. You're like, oh, they think I'm French. What, they thought you were French? Yes. Bonjour. Yeah. They start, and I was, I'm so sorry, I'm English. Do you speak much French? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dan's my family. Don, my family. Ilya. <laughs> Ilya. I remember this from persons. Mon mère, Wendy. Mon, mon père. père. Mon père, Graham. Mon père. Uh, mon mon br- frère. Mon frère, Ryan, Dominic, Bradley. <laughs> Very French names. Something like, we like to go to the cinemas at weekends. Or something like that. Yes. CCSE. No, I don't speak a lot of French. I speak more German. We won't go down that route again. Posh um, Do you speak any Latin? Uh, a little bit. Caecilius est in Horto, which is Caecilius is in the garden. He was always in the Horto. It's all he d- I don't think he had a house. I'm not being funny, but why do we need to speak Latin anymore? Well, it's very good because a lot of English words uh, derive from Latin words. Yeah. So it's... Jump cut, Jack. What are you... I'm going to have you ejaculated from this room in a moment. We've got the entire team here. We've got the whole team in. Well, you may not have noticed. on the laptops. Welcome to... Jordan and I spent the last three weeks since Ben's microphone got turned on going, one of the things we hate is typing. And just to gaslight us, there are now five laptops here, all typing. Welcome to Millennials Hot Desk. <laughs> Look at them. Every one of them. Every one of them. No, we love you. No, Jack, it's fine. Oh, we need it. Need an impression for Jack. You, you do, yes. I haven't got one. Jack, you don't know what is about to happen. He used to be a painter and decorator, so... Do you smoke Rollies? No. Sorry, no, that's a general... That's a generalisation. Anyway, you're right. How's your week? Yeah, good. All good. Get ready for Christmas and that now. Good. Yeah, got and one. that. And what? Oh, you said Christmas and that? Yeah, you know. Is that us? That. Coming around on New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. We're doing a picky tea. Yes. Right, but we've got to tell you, it's a bit potluck, so you need to bring something to add to the picky tea. <laughs> what? 
You can't, sorry, etiquette. You can't change the type of party after we've accepted it's the invitation. It's weeks away. Just bring some cheese or turkey Twizzlers or something. Oh, just, yes, I've got loads. If You can bring them and warm them up in hours. You don't have to bring them. Just some uh, Pringles. No, I won't be bringing those. No? Doritos. Doritos. Mm-hmm. No, I'll, I'll, do you want sweet or savoury? Uh, I'm doing brownies for savoury. Okay. Just I'll... bring something to add. I'm sure we can. Everyone bring. else has been fine about it. Chelsea and James are like, great, we'll get some of it in. Oh, they are coming because I text them. Chelsea and I were texting, and then I said, oh, and I'm seeing you on New Zealand. And then she didn't text back. And I thought, oh, God, is she actually um, not coming? And I've. No, no, no. She's no, good. Yeah. Okay, fine. So we're going to have. Yeah. Pull well, tea. Okay. Um, also, as well, we need to mm. talk about uh, thanks to everyone that's um, bought tickets for our tour. No, it was weeks ago. 2024. Um, the, the, the North guest list is getting a bit out of hand. <laughs> I went on to the spreadsheet <laughs> to no. add some names. There's no room. To be fair... I feel like, I feel like Mary and Joseph. To be fair, <laughs> I messaged the group oh, and then... Uh, and what's he called? Anonymous Stu? What's he called? Um, no, it's Anonymous Adam. Um, or A.V. Adam. Chairman. Chairman Emeritus Stewart. Chairman Emeritus Stewart. Uh, You'll learn that one week. He said, right, yeah. send me the names. And I thought... I can't be asked with William here, so I sent him an email. And how many was on the? I think it was twenty-four to start with. Right. Well, there's to start with. There's a few more names. So my well, uncle, my uncle Alan's, and they, they've all. I love how they've all messaged saying, tried to get tickets, but we couldn't. So my uncle Alan. I'm not Ant, sure they tried that hard. My uncle Alan and Auntie Nori want to get on, and there might be. Um, oh, uh, our Kirsty wants to know if she can have two more, and my uncle Justin wants to know if he can. In all seriousness, they will have to come to the second night, not the first, because there is literally no room on the first night now. We can squeeze them in. No, that's not how it works. No, we can squeeze them in. It's fine. They'll be on the stage at this rate, which oh, actually could be quite, could actually be quite fun. I said to my mother yesterday, I said, does she want to come on stage in Bristol? Yeah. Is it she coming? Good. No. Oh. She's, she said, no, we don't need to come to that. Oh. But I said, oh, you could come on stage. They would literally, the audience would go wild. <laughs> she said no. But I'm working on it. What are you doing for Christmas? Um, it's called a segue. <laughs> I'm down south for Christmas. You're down south for Christmas? Yeah, I'm going up to Burnley on the 28th. Right. So the plan is to let them have their Christmas, let all the headbutt in and scratch in and scrap in start first, and then I'll mm. go up when it's settled down. Right. Yeah. Okay. Also, um, uh, disclaimer, I, I've got to say on, on behalf of my sister-in-law, she doesn't speak to her kids like that. <laughs> <laughs> regarding, regarding last week's impression. Okay. <laughs> She's never threatened to lever her kids ever. No, God, I could not, not see Kate doing that. No, she wouldn't. I was just, I was, you know, my impressions are loosely based on people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Kate should really be flattered. Kate should know that your impressions are nothing like. Yeah, that's right. With I the say. exception of producer Ben. Yeah. Are nothing like the person. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, Kate shouldn't be embarrassed. What are you doing for Christmas? Uh, I'm down south as well, because, of course, last year I was, I was up north, mm -hmm. which was very kind of you to let me. Uh, but <laughs> this year... <laughs> that was a fun Christmas. Yes. <laughs> it's walking funny till New Year's Eve. <laughs> uh, this year we're down south with oh, my yeah. family. Yeah. Is it just me? I love that Crimbo Limbo week. Everyone hates it, but I love it. No, I like it. That week when you don't know what day it is. You just... Twixtmas, I think, is the more upmarket way of saying it. Gooch week. That's definitely down market. Yeah. Mm. I love, so I like that, the Cream Bar Limbo week. Going, I'm going, I'm going to walk up Pendle Hill. Nice. Mm. Lovely. Yes, because yes. I invited you to see if you want to go to the Panto again. and you're, you're Are, are you going to another Panto? Well, it's the same again. <laughs> you're 34 years old, man. Excuse me. It's... Oh. It, was it, how many have you heard some of the songs you play? Like if we're going to start <laughs> this. Like what? Midlife crisis songs. Like what? Fred again. <laughs> Can't think of anyone else to be honest. <laughs> Very popular. Oh, my mother, talking of songs, sorry to sort of um, switch mediums, your winter song that you've done on your other line of work. Yeah. Uh, she said... It's very good. I shazammed it, but it didn't come up. It didn't. I said, no, because it's not a commercially available song. It's a joke parody song they've done for Radio 1. Well, I thought it would come up, she said. Does she listen to Radio yes. 1? Oh, Aww. she's so sweet. She can't stand Sarah Cox, so she listens to you. Oh, that's... Oh, oh Sarah... I'd make it no secret. Like, I like Sarah Cox. She's my, one of my radio idols. Right, well, but my mother prefers I you. I used Vic. to listen to her all the time. Like, that's exactly the way she, no one tells a story better than Sarah Cox on the radio. I do not like her. 
<laughs> There's no news on the radio all the time, and we get it, you're from Bolton, but please! <laughs> Sarah, I can't stand it. Can't we have someone with pronounced appreciation? What? <laughs> Received pronunciation. Received pronunciation. I'm pissed. Pronunciation. Received pronunciation. I'm pissed. Pronunciation. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. Shut up, you. I'm pissed. I've been on the champagne. It's Christmas. I've pulled the ribcord, darlings. Oh. Yeah. Sarah's ace. Which, sorry, Sarah. my mother or Sarah oh. Cox? Maybe it's a Sarah thing. Yeah. Sarah's don't like other Sarah's. That's probably why. Oh, absolutely. She probably thinks that could be her. Sarah. I love Sarah. Um, anyway. anyway, no, she's been listening to your winter song. I thought it was very good. She went, she's... oh, we got Picky T in there as well. She's so... It's like, yes, of course, I heard it. <laughs> you haven't you haven't listened to <laughs> me for... You never listen to me. I do. Yeah. How rude. Ben doesn't. Ben does. I'm no. working. My mum doesn't. Wendy's, a well, very, Wendy's very much a heart girl. Is she? Yeah. <laughs> she loves heart. She loves it. She knows. Have you met Jamie and Amanda yet? I love Jamie and Amanda. They are, they, yeah, and she heard you on once, but didn't realise it was you. Yeah. <laughs> she went, oh, that's who it was. She said, I thought you were a politician. I was like, talking about napkins. She has it on the background. Does she? Yes. Yeah. Okay, fine. Well, she might want to. What's your favourite radio station? What's my favourite? BBC Three Counters. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. After that? Um, radio One. Oh, correct answer. Mm. Yeah. I do like a bit of talk sport. Yeah. Do. Times Radio I like. Yeah. I should also say quite quickly. <laughs> I listen to Jane Garvin's podcast. Sometimes. Do you? Yeah. And Fee Glover. And Fee, yeah. Nice. We should ask, Ben, what are you doing for Christmas? Seeing as this is one of the last times we can talk to you. Um, this Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Would you like me to show Yes, go on. We're, all, we're all ears. This is the first time, like, except for COVID, that I won't be with my family, so... I'll be with Kat's family. Oh. You obviously met, so. Yes. Um, and what going... meat are you having? What? <laughs> turkey? turkey? Goose? Like I assume turkey. I Who has goose? Know. Some people have goose. Is that like fancy? Mm. Ish. Turkey's better. And uh, beef. Some people have beef. Some people have a nut roast. Some people have chicken. Ooh. No, I think normally I like to go to the pub on Christmas Day. Yes, so do I. I don't know. For the meal? Not for the meal, no. just for a few pounds. Hey, there's nothing wrong with going to a pub for a meal. Well, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, well, that's that's lovely, Ben. What have you asked Father Christmas for? I uh, haven't really. I haven't just... Well, no, this because I'm struggling to buy you... Presents. Oh, nice. I'm struggling to buy you a present because you're, you've A, got no house yeah. anymore at the time this house. episode goes out. Yeah. You're also going travelling, so I you don't necessarily want to... So what the heck do I get you? Oh, no personality, so it's really... Happy. <laughs> Sorry, that was... <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. That was too, that was below the belt. You've wow. got a great, that was really harsh, sorry. And sorry about laughing at your nan again last week. That was really, <laughs> that was bad. Sorry. That was a bit too, bit low that, weren't it? No, it was, it, I thought it was quite it's fun. Hilarious. It's because we love him and we're going to miss him. Yeah. We are. Oh, I've got a Radio 2 bottle there, look. <laughs> nice. I feel really bad now, Ben. Sorry. No, it's fine. We will miss you. No, I'll miss you I'm too. going to say this now on the record. We will miss you. We will miss you greatly. But this is a fun celebration of sex with my boss. So, shall we continue? Okay. So, Bye. Ben, um, we've put a little surprise together for you. Would you like to come over here? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> shall we go on to etiquette etymology then? We've got, a, we've got a little surprise for you. Come <laughs> we need you, to, you might need to take those ridiculous things off. No, no, no. Keep them on. You need on. to put headphones on to hear it. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. Just. So, um, we've... Just kneel down so the camera's got you. We do you want to put some headphones on? Sorry for saying you didn't have a personality. That was really harsh. Oh, yeah. You do. Ben's got little antlers on. <clears throat> so, um, because you're going away and you've been working hard on this podcast for five incredible years now. Five and a half. Five and a half incredible years. And we, well, we don't... it's actually nearly six, actually, since we first started. All right, just let him finish. Six Sorry. years since we first started and all your hard work and effort has, has been critical to the success of this podcast. So we've got the guys here um, behind the scenes to put together some audio of your best bits. Let's have a listen. Oh, that was marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was lovely. Jack, well done. What a nice edit you did. <laughs> I just got it. Just, can I just say, well just can I just time. say, your good. comedy timing could have been a bit longer there. <laughs> I feel like you've ruined no, I, that. No, and also, no, I got it, I got it, just no. in time. And also, like, <laughs> this, can I, I just think you could have paused a bit, like, if I'm, 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 if I'm being critical there, William, because yesterday, William sent me this message, and I just feel like... Uh, I don't think I said anything bad, in it? Hello, love, see you tomorrow. Um, just an idea. Uh, obviously, at some point tomorrow, we'll be doing... <laughs> Ben's, you know, bye bye Ben. How about you and I do a little gag? <laughs> that was and it. It, stop. <laughs> it just stops after the little gag. <laughs> I think it has to come from you to start it off because you'll be able to do it with more sincerity. You can go, and obviously Ben, you know, we could invite him over, put, pop these headphones on, pop these headphones on. Good. We've edited together a selection. This is you've got to say. I could have delivered it a bit better, to be fair. Of some of your best. I think we did fine. Wait. On the podcast. Let's have a listen. Press play. Absolute silence for three seconds. And then I pick off off the back of it going, oh, it's lovely, wasn't it? Didn't Jack do well editing that? The joke being, there are no best bits. Just felt the Not pause could you. have been longer. But Ben, we will miss you. And we have actually put together some of your best bits. Uh, sure. We haven't, sorry. <laughs> Keep trying. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Bye. <laughs> Keep in touch. <laughs> oh, shit. Should I leave now? <laughs> yeah, off you go. Bye, bye. Good luck travelling. We'll need a better grip than that abroad, trust me. <laughs> There's three months. <laughs> well, Shall we go to um, <laughs> William's wow. Etiquetomology wow. of the week? Wow. Or whatever it is. If you, like, get out there and run out of money, mm. you know, like, you watch Race Across the World. Yeah. Yes. W would you toss someone off for the night for a room? <laughs> would you? Seriously, say you run out of money and you and Kat are starving and you've not like slept for two nights. I don't think they're going to run out of money. I'm not going to answer that question. Would you not? <laughs> okay. Here's the jingle. It's William, William, the etiquette geek. His knowledge, knowledge is quite unique. He'll give you manners, manners, a subtle tweak. It's time for William's etiquette, etiquette, etymology of the week. Cha cha cha, lovely. Um, well, it's a Christmassy episode, so I thought we'd do a Christmassy etiquette and we're going to talk about something that we've talked about many a time on this podcast. Why are fairy lights called fairy lights, <laughs> or as I call them in my house, lights? And we'll find out why fairy lights are called fairy lights after these messages. All right, Jean Davis, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, it's now time before we go to your problems and dilemmas for William's etiquette etymology of the week. William Hansen, why are fairy lights called fairy lights? Well, they go back as far as 1882, but they were not originally for Christmas. They actually begun at the Savoy Theatre in London, which is currently showing Sunset Boulevard, which I'll be saying in the Gooch Week. Um, the Savoy Theatre <laughs> was the first to be lit entirely by electricity and not gaslight. Uh, in 1882, Gilbert Sullivan's Ialanthe premiered at the theatre. In order to publicise the new play and the theatre fully lit by electricity, the proprietor, Richard Doyley Cart, came up with an idea. He got Joseph Swan, who had invented the electric light bulb the previous year, to design miniature lights run on batteries, which could be worn as part of the costumes of... Da -da -da -da, Fairies. The fairies. Uh, and that show opened to great acclaim in November 1882, and the miniature fairy lights became a must have fashion accessory for society ladies. Uh, and in 1883, as a publicity stunt, uh, someone called Edward Johnson decorated the tree in New York with fairy lights. Uh, and thus, fairy lights then became associated with Christmas. Now, they were very expensive, and those. They were very expensive and not seen in Burnley until 1952, when Mrs. Arkwright got a full house on her bingo. And this, along with her dirty nets, stopped oh. traffic. And that's the history of fairy lights. Oh. Oh. What happened in oh. Burnley? I made that last bit up. Um, <laughs> but I thought it was quite funny. And what's wrong with net curtains, you snob? Do you have net curtains? No. There we go. I had lots of net curtains growing up. Yes, but, and in, in the 1950s, net curtains were de a the rigueur. Oh, let's not go down this route. <laughs> That's actually quite interesting. So Thank the you. fairy lights on the tree first started in, in New York. Mm. Well, yeah. no, in London, and then as associated with Christmas, New York. Okay. Do you like Christmas? Do I like Christmas? Yeah. It's all right. 
Mm. I don't love it. I don't go, whoa, it's Christmas. Do must you know? Put, must I stick the tree you, up. I thought you did. No. No. Oh. Do you like Christmas? Yeah. I've well, worked I've worked most of them. Are you working this year? Yeah, I'm on air this year. Are you? Yeah. You're going to be playing winter? Maybe. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, how lovely. Shall we go to listeners' problems and dilemmas? Let's do this. This one is from E. Dear William Jordan, EPB and Diego, my divorced father has recently started dating again and has found a lovely woman. They've been going on lots of dates and getting on well, which I think is lovely. However, I think it may turn slightly awkward between my father and me after this morning's shenanigans. I was sitting eating my breakfast when I heard some post coming through the letterbox, which is rather unusual. We have a postbox outside as we have a little terrier who likes to both who likes to bite the post's fingers and rip up the post. Our dog had beat me to the post and began ripping it up. To my surprise, it was some intense feel textured condoms. I looked at what remained of the packaging, only to see that it was addressed to my father. He gets, him, he gets embarrassed around sexual things. I don't think I've ever heard him say the words bum, boobs or willy. <laughs> I don't think that's that unusual. I don't particularly want You've to... You've never heard your dad say bum, boobs or willy? No, not really. Not, not that I can remember. <laughs> not that type of daddy. <laughs> wow. Wow, Ben. Oh, we're going to miss you. <laughs> yes. I don't particularly want to just hand him a box of condoms, nor do I want my dad to know I've seen his X-rated purchase. So what are my options here? Do I just throw them away and pretend they never arrived, or do I find some packaging and pretend the dog never got to it? What is the etiquette around a teenage daughter having to rescue her father's condoms from the dog from E? Well, first of all, it's good. I remember watching some on the rain. It was a few years ago now, but STIs were on the rise. From did the rain do a feature on textured, textured condoms? No, I think it was like I think it was the on the rain. Something like STIs. It, was, it wasn't in the rain. It's on the rise for over fifties because right. they all think, oh, this girl, I don't need to. Mm. Yeah, so it's good that he's looking at. I think you well, just be an ad, just just leave it on the side and don't mention it. You don't need to mention it. No, and do you know e what I mean. I don't know if you want a little brother or sister, um, but, you know, if you don't, I would strongly encourage them to wear a condom. That's what I'd say. Yeah, no, he's, he's, huh? he's, he's, he's only being sensible, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> textured. What sort of texture? Like a cashmere? No, no I, I think... Is it texture? Is it one with the bumps on? Ribbed. <laughs> Ribbed for your pleasure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's very sensible. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry. I think I think just, just leave, I would just leave it. Yeah, I'd just leave, leave it, it there for the... and no one will ever have to mention it. E, I mean, quite frankly though, by the time we've actually got round to reading this out, you've probably been and gone. So let us know what happened. Mm. That would be nice. Yeah. This have is... you seen that video of that guy who blows a condom up on his head? No. Says don't do that at home. Says he's a, <laughs> says he's a unicorn. It's got to be the funniest video ever. He you know, you know, puts on like a hillbilly accent and goes, "I'm a unicorn." <laughs> I've got to show you. Wait. No, I don't need to see no, it. I get the idea. It's so funny. Wait there. Yeah, here we go. Look. <laughs> anyway, that was worth it. Busy week, yes? <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is from Anonymous. Hi, Jordan William and EPB. About six months ago, my husband and I were at my mother-in-law's. She just had her sitting room refurbed, and she hung up a new picture. This picture is absolutely massive and hideous, but trying to be polite, I complimented it, saying how nice it was. She then asked if we would like one for our sitting room. I accepted, as I didn't want to come across as rude. Before I knew it, my father-in-law started putting the picture up on our sitting room wall. My husband and I hate it and get embarrassed whenever people come around. I have since told my husband to take it down, but our dilemma now is what do we say when my in-laws come round? Mm. Do we say we have taken it down because we're about to paint the wall and just never put it back up? Two, never invite them in again. Three, be honest with them. Or four, say we hung it above our bed, which is what my husband wants to say. Thanks, Anonymous. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, with ornaments, it's fine. You just bring it out and they come round, but pictures, mm. you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or nailed, mm. potentially. Um, I would say, number four, say it's above you. Well, no, because, I mean, not, you know, your parents might at some point just go into your bedroom. You might repaint or sort of put in a new bedside table you want to show them. And then when the, paint, the painting's not there, you've got a problem. So I wouldn't do that. I would be honest with them. It's actually, I'm so sorry we never liked it. Would you like it? No, back? here's what I'd do. I'd mm. be like, I absolutely love it. 
but it doesn't quite look right in our house. I can't put my finger on it, but it looks better in your, I love your one, and it's just not quite working in our house. Mm. Bosh, nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. What was that? High five. Do it again, but butch. <laughs> that slam dunk. Okay. <laughs> okay, those wrists work well, don't they? Um, <laughs> this is from Reese. Hi, William Jordan, EPP, and A.V. Adam. A.V. Adam, you're hey! in a letter. Hey! Round of applause for A.V. Adam, please, everybody. <laughs> you finally made it. Look at his, <laughs> look at his little face. <laughs> He's going to go home and tell the missus about that today. <laughs> I was wondering what the etiquette is on gift giving at Christmas. I have quite a large family with lots of aunties, uncles and cousins that I'm close with who always give me gifts at Christmas. I also want to give them presents too, but I'm unsure on how much to spend as it can get quite expensive. For example, my cousin and their partner get me a gift collectively, which they halve the cost of. However, I feel I need to spend the same on each of them, but as I am single, I have no one to split the cost with, meaning that I'm spending more overall to match what they've spent. I don't want to seem tight, but due to having such a large family, my expenditure over the Christmas period is ridiculous. I look forward to hearing what your thoughts are. Thanks, Reese. Oh, this is the worst thing about Christmas. And I know it's easy for us to say it, Reese, but if you can't afford it, you don't have to buy people No, presents. you don't have to match someone's spend. You don't. And if, if, if you can't afford and maybe some, a nice gesture, so if uh, you can't afford a gift, something small, or maybe you could make something. That's always quite nice. Some nice words in a card. Yeah, some nice words in a card. Or maybe make a nice cake or some brownies or something. I, I, I don't know, but don't it, worry. If I gave someone a gift and didn't give me one back, I would not no. bat an eyelid. And neither should your friends or family. That's not what Christmas is about. No. And also, I, I don't agree. I, only, I personally think gifts should be for immediate family. I don't buy for my cousins and stuff. I'd be bankrupt. Oh, really? No, yeah. you see, we're quite close, so I do. Do you? Yeah, oh, and they're, no, and they're now no. partners. We don't even, I don't even get my brothers anything. We've just, we agreed years ago. So like just Well, that, look, if on. there's been an agreement, and I think also... We get Reece, the kids somewhere. Mum and dad, my grandma and the kids. Communicate. Mm. Just like Jordan said, you talk to them, look, can't, you know, it's a bit, man is a bit tight this year. Do we need to get anything? I don't need anything. I think you've got to be prepared to not then get anything either, if you're not going to. You've got to give to receive. It's always been my motto. Do you know what the nicest thing I always thought? I was at a friend's wedding and her father-in-law was a bit skinny. So instead of getting him a gift, he decorated the living room. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought that was really sweet. Was it in the colour they wanted or? <laughs> well, yeah, he didn't just go around and do it. Like, he decorated the living room. Like, he gave his time. That was their present to him. I thought that was really sweet. I think that's nice. Yes, you can do he that. Decorated the living room for him. Maybe I can donate my time to Ben. Maybe that's what I do for Ben's present. What would you... You've got... I will donate five minutes. What would you like? We could do a lot in five minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Five minutes? With them teeth? Wow. This is from Andrea in Sydney. Dear William Jordan, producer Ben and Diego. I've been married to my husband for over 15 years. A few years ago, he asked me to look at his bum hole, as he thought he might have been suffering from hemorrhoids. <laughs> Horrified at the request, I strongly declined, and to my surprise, he thought I was being unreasonable. I agree! <laughs> oh, come on, 15 years of marriage! Taking matters into his own hands, he proceeded to use the video recorder we had at the time, 15 years ago, and took a picture of the area so he could have a closer look. Unfortunately, he failed to delete the photo, and a few weeks later, to my horror, whilst watching a slideshow on the TV of a recent trip, the offending image appeared <laughs> in between the family shots. <laughs> Luckily, it was only the two of us watching. My question is, is it appropriate to ask anyone, other than your doctor, to inspect your arsehole? <laughs> well... Also, is it appropriate to take photographs of your private parts so you can have a closer look? Much love, Andrea in Sydney. Andrea in Sydney, good day. Um, <laughs> I never got people that took pictures of the hemorrhoids. Like, why? You know, it's trust me. How many pictures? How many people do you know that take pictures Quite of their hemorrhoids? Quite a few. Quite a few. My dad had to take one. Of, um, well, I'm not going to go into this, but but like, what's the point? You know, you you know, if something's dangling out your ass. 
and it's a bit sore. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> you know it's a, you know it's an MRI. <laughs> you don't need to take. Oh, a, that's that's your name. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to take a picture. Just do it. You either go to the doctor or just you don't need. To, like I don't. I, I agree that your husband shouldn't have been such a um, stiff and had a had a look at it. That's fine, but... You, no, she didn't have a look at she it. She didn't have a look at it. Oh, she didn't have... Oh, was it he his? He had the hemorrhoids. Oh, yeah. Look, she, want, she was asked to look at them. Yeah, that's fine. Andrea's husband had a big problem down under. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just don't get why people... I know a few people that have took pictures of them and stuff. You mean you? No. Not me, but I know people that have. And just Can trust... you name three of them? Yeah. <laughs> what, the hemorrhoids? No. <laughs> don't name the hemorrhoids. <laughs> This one's Matthew. This one's Mark. This Luke. Luke. John. Emma. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that sort of comedy will not be missed. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> um, I, I think. Look, you. And this was fifteen years ago. Camera phones now, obviously, you know, cameras are on everything. Oh, on tablets, you could on squat phones. over it now and put it on selfie mode, couldn't you? Yes, so, timer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Use the technology to your advantage, but yes, try to delete them. In fact, do delete them afterwards because it will be a problem. Yeah. But also, Andrea, I don't know. I don't. I think if your partner's got something wrong with them, I know it's it's an unfortunate part of the body. But I I would. If Mikey said, mm. "Yeah, we have a look at this in my ass," <laughs> it's most nice in your ass. <laughs> I'd have a quick nose. Yes. Um, so we could have a look. No, I agree. 15 years of marriage. It's not like you're six months in. <laughs> I think Ben's about to die. <laughs> you okay? I'm just gearing up. This is from Lucy. Dear William Jordan and EPB, help. A question just dawned on me after a recent drunken night on cocktails and I knew just the boys to ask. Me and the girls, the girls and I, were out in a very nice restaurant. 15 to 20 pounds for a cocktail level of nice. Oh, God. And I clocked onto a couple of weird looks being thrown my way after spearing the raspberries out to the bottom of the glass with my straw and eating them. And now I've questioned my life choices. I know with drinks like martinis, they have an olive or two as part of the experience, as well as a cherry at the bottom of a champagne flute. But what? where does eating the garnish cross the line? I'm not eating the rosemary stalks, orange peel, or the little peppercorns, because that's insane. But should I eat the slither of cucumber out of the gin balloon, or the passion fruit on top of a porn star? Martini, presumably. There was even one that looked like it had half a mango splayed on top of it. I couldn't just leave that. Or is it just merely there for decoration? It makes me feel like I'm wasting it if I'm not eating them. So what is the etiquette for eating the garnishes out of a cocktail? I've always seen it as a little snack, but now I'm thinking maybe I'm just a straight-up greedy bitch. Is there a correct way to eat them? I'd love to know. But if it's frowned upon, I may still do it. But more of a discreet greedy bitch. Lots of love, light and happiness to you all. Lucy. Great question, Lucy. I... Mm, I... It depends. Depends what establishment you're in. I tend to eat some of them. I mean, if it's a woo-woo in Weatherspoon, you know. I'm gonna sorry. You're not going to have the guard. I don't think you get How many times have you eaten a woo-woo in Weatherspoon? No, he's drink a woo-woo. Right. Never had a woo-woo. No. no. What the heck's a, what's in a woo-woo? They serve it in a big bucket. No, it's in a big jug in Weatherspoons. But what is it? I don't know. No it's one here knows. It's a woo-woo. Does it make you go woo afterwards? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Woo. Um... <laughs> Woo! Do it again, but Butch. Woo. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I probably wouldn't eat the garnish. No, I think a, an olive I, yeah. on with a martini because it's on a little stick. If it's on a stick and you can sort of just pop it in your mouth and take it, take the stick out, fine. But if it's, yeah, a raspberry, sort of a, a loose, free raspberry, n with not with your straw. No? What? No. Do you think it's a bit common? I think it's very common. Okay. Pims, then. You could say any sort of cocktail with that sort of garnish, a mango on top, a raspberry, is a common cocktail. Wow. That's a bit harsh. It's not harsh. Oh, it's my opinion. Gin and Bonnet, what's your favourite cocktail? Gin and tonic. That's not a cocktail. No, it's not a cocktail. Um, it's got three ingredients. I quite like a... Well done. Who taught you that? Me. Uh, a gimlet. <laughs> a gimlet? Yes. What's that? It's a gin-based cocktail. I don't know what else is in it. I, but... don't, I don't know if that's got three ingredients. Well, I like an old-fashioned and... And, and yeah. a vodka martini. 
But vodka martinis too. Yeah, it's, it's just yeah. yeah, yeah. It's when they have names like sex on the beach, woo woo. That's when we're in the sort of slight realms of being a bit uh, pina colada. Yes, if you like pina coladas. Um, but yeah, if in doubt, Lucy, don't. So I would say um, probably don't do it. It's Great my... question, though. What's your favourite Christmas cocktail? Oh, top tip for I you. I don't like Christmas cocktails. Right, really into these at the moment. Mm -hmm. A Bailey's or Ballycastle coffee, whatever you get your Irish cream from. Amarula. Mm. That's much, that's similar to Bailey's, but just a little bit, a little bit more luxury. It sounds. I might bring so, an Amarula. Um, what's the word? Elitist. It's, it's actually, literally it's actually, I'm a ruler. It's South African. No, it's Amar. It was an A. I'm a ruler. Anyway, have just get instant coffee, mix in a double shot of Bailey's, then put the hot water in. What? And it's honestly, it's the best. Try it now, Gene Devers. That's all you need, and it's so Christmassy. Just get instant coffee, mix in your Bailey's, then pour hot water in a Bailey's coffee. Get you on your way. Right. Um, before we get, and obviously, look, we've got the weekend release. We've got big, big things planned for the weekend release. Do you want to tell us what's coming up on the weekend release? Uh, we've got a Help I Sex and My Boss Nativity Come Panto Come Christmas Story featuring all your favourite impressions. That's a lot of cum. Written. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time you said that this week. <laughs> Written by Jump Cut Jack. Oh. Can you do that, but a bit butch? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's my butch you voice. You can't do butch. It turns um, out. Now, look, before we go, Ben, we, uh, I don't know if you know this, but we hid the Help I Section My Boss Instagram story from you for the last couple of days. And oh, uh, we have asked for people's messages and advice for you going away. Yeah. Um, the, the advice we so will pass. We will. <laughs> no, that, this, that we actually do have content for this. Um, the advice we will pass on to you for you to read. But. I think we'd just like to go over just a couple of the messages okay. that have come in. You go first. Amy, don't die. Thanks, Amy. That was nice. Please take this time to heal from painful bullying you see from the boys. We'll work on them. Jesse, oh, don't. It's not bullying. We love him. Grace says, keep cat by your side, heart, which is very nice. Take Jordan with you, says Neil. Take a mini cardboard, William and Jordan, says Joseph. Lauren says, don't go. Oh, well, and Lauren speaks for us all. I'm, I'm going. Uh, uh, Bernice says, stay safe, EPB. Hope you have fun, but don't forget to come back. Sharon says, you better come back. Can't be having someone else producing the show. Also, have a good time. Tinky says, thank you, PB, for all that you do for us, G and Divas. Get more ear piercings. I will not be doing that. La La says... <laughs> 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 Very good. Oh, <laughs> Uh, we will love you and miss you and your giggle, EPB. Have an incredible time. That's from Anonymous. Jamie says, make sure Anonymous. you come back just as handsome as you are now. Wow. Oh. Um, Shani says, hope EPB has an okay time. I say okay because I don't want him to have a great time and not come back to the pod. Uh, Amelia says, you might not come back. I left for six months and came back 6.5 years later and said, you might hear like a Latin, Latino. He might just live out there. If you hear, hola, and welcome to help I sex to my boss, sir. You know that he's, he's staying out. Well, if we're not cancelled so before the <laughs> meantime. Hola. Um, uh, take plenty of photos, eat lots of food, and don't forget to go on the pool. That's from Kat. Go on the pool? Yes. <laughs> no, that was from Kaylee. Uh. Um, and uh, you do one more, I'll do one more. Uh, giggle at least three times a day. Have you done that? Uh, no, I was about to do uh, that one as the last one. Yes. You giggle at least three times a day so you don't unlearn it for when you get back. We'll miss you. And Stacey says... That's from Jenny. Hi, guys. We love you and genuinely hope that you don't get the shits. Bye, guys. Oh, you're going to get the shits. Yeah. Travelling. Have you got your, like, um, I probiotics? To, I need to get to Boots tonight. Stock up on Imodium Instant. Oh, Imodium's really good for you. Welcome to your 30s, pal. Imodium and make sure you take plenty of Gaviscon or Rennie. Yes. Okay. Mm. Something to suck on. Well, bye, guys. Thanks. Stay safe. Are you taking a backpack? Yes. Are you, going, are you actually going backpacking? Yes, backpacking. Well, Kat and I were just talking about this. Is it better to say travelling or backpacking? Backpacking. There we go, then. Neither. <laughs> Travelling sounds like you're maybe on the Orange Express. Say gap year. Say you're going on your gap year. 
Oh, God. How many times do you think you're going to fall out? We're not going to fall out. No, you're not. No. Of course not. No. Off you go. Oh, can you imagine you and Mikey going traveling? Well, we go on holiday. <laughs> yeah, but traveling. Oh, no. We oh, wouldn't do that. I'd pay to see that. I wouldn't do that with anyone. I would pay to see that. Well, if Channel 5 are interested. <laughs> Always remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesdays and Fridays. And you can share us on your socials all week. You can send yourself tales of trepidation to help at Sex My Boss. Or you can tweet us or message us on Instagram. That's at Sex With My Boss. Or you can write to William Who, in the fullness of time, promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards of executive self seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sexofmyboss.com. We are back on Friday for our Nativity Come Panto Come Christmas story. And can we please, everybody in the studio, have a big round of applause for producer Bay! Woo! 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 Woo!